Hi, I'm David. I own and operate Country Whatnot Gardens here outside of Rochester, Indiana, which is about an hour south of the Michigan state line. I grow 25 different species and varieties of bamboo, such as this Phyllostachys rubber marginata behind me. And I had this tool here. This is my Ecoho out a while back, demonstrating with kind of just with some common garden weeds how the uh, tine side here uh, works for regular garden weeds. And I had specified that time that I use the chopping side for removing bamboo uh, when necessary. And here I have, amongst the lawn grass, underneath this uh, weeping cherry right here, flowering weeping cherry. It's beginning to show signs of flowering. There's some buds coming out, but this rubber marginata has come over here and is growing on this berm, which is the berm to my iris rain garden right there, and it has come from that grove of rubber marginata right there, traveled over here, and right there. Rubber marginata is a species that uh, does not hold true to the general rule of thumb about spreading only as far from the edge of the grove, right there, this way outward as the tallest comb is high. It tends, although it is pretty tall, it tends to push that rule of thumb uh, more so than some of the other bamboos that I have. But right here, we have some bamboo foliage you can see coming up in the lawn, and I have my trusty Ikaho, and I'm going to use the chopping side of it to remove this right out of here below, below the soil. Not so deep as to hurt the tree roots, of course. And there's a rock there somewhere. There's a rock everywhere. I try to dig on this property. Now, I'm not going after the rhizome here. That's not my goal. There's another rock. My goal is to remove as deep as I can without, again, disturbing the tree root, uh, this um, top growth off this bamboo. Well, okay, I did get a piece of rhizome right there. There it is. If I can get it in the picture, you can see the, let's see, there's the rhizome. There's some feeder roots. There's where uh, some combs were coming up right there. So I did remove that bit. And as long as you leave this on top of the ground, uh, I find it doesn't really take off unless you're expecting a lot of rain, maybe then it might. Depending on soil, depending on soil type, moisture, and location. We'll we'll put that uh, disclaimer in there. I've not had a problem with it. We'll put it that way. Some some might, depending on your location, soil type, and rainfall. Now, otherwise, throw it someplace um, that it won't take off if you don't want it to. But it's not too difficult to... Um, control this or remove it. You can see I've done a pretty swift job of it here. And uh, while I didn't remove the whole rhizome under there, removing that green um, foliage right there keeps the portion of the rhizome from photosynthesizing and weakens it. And you can see down here across the ground, you can see it's still fastened. Uh, is a rhizome that was has actually been exhausted by this treatment because it didn't have any green leaves left and so it it died and you can see it right there if you wanted to you could pull it out of there but I'm not going to I'll leave it there as a, a demonstration piece maybe <laughs> but uh, it does exhaust it by removing the foliage it does take some time it's going to take more than one uh, removal of green foliage in this spot, of course, but if you keep after it, it does exhaust the roots. And again, this is my favorite tool for doing that. It's an Ikaho, I-K-A. Ika means squid. I think if we look at it head on this way, we can see why it's called a squid hoe. Looks like a squid. <laughs> but this side is for chopping. This side more so is for loosening soil and cultivating. You see how much I've used it? I keep it shiny. And if you get one, you can see the um, wedge sticks up like this. That's normal. That's how Japanese wedge is. So it's not it's not broken or loose. And it's this side of it is knurled, so it grips your wood handle. Perfectly normal for the wedge to stick up like that. But um, you can see this berm is pretty pretty clear of rubber marginata 
foliage now being removed. And now those rhizomes under there, when the weather starts getting warm enough for this plant to be in active growth mode, won't be photosynthesizing and um, those leaves won't be photosynthesizing and further feeding that rhizome that's under there. And yes, you could pull it up if you wanted to, but I'm not going to because I don't want to disturb the roots on my weeping cherry. This weeping cherry is one of my favorite trees in the garden because it's it's unique in that it's not common to find a weeping cherry that is not grafted. This this tree is weeping cherry from root to crown. It's not a graft. It was propagated by a nursery that grew it from a rooted cutting, which I'm very thankful to have found. It's been here for six years now, and it was about three foot tall when I got it, and it's now way up there, but um, looking pretty good. So I'm keeping the rubber marginata away from it, and um, it's doing great, and also keeping the rubber marginata from this Lamprocapnos over here that's coming up. Lamprocapnos, um, common name, what they call a bleeding heart, a bleeding fern. And you can see that uh, the leaves came up a little bit too early, and they did get nipped by some freezing. So hopefully it will be okay time will tell hopefully it didn't expend all of its all of its buds yet now hopefully it's still got some more under there but it likes being here underneath this high canopy of this weeping cherry tree it gives it just about the right amount of shade and um, it does pretty well here but anyway that has been a look at removing foliage off of off of some bamboo in the yard and how it's done and how to exhaust this root system. So if you liked the video, please give me a like, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, thank you for stopping by and take care. Bye.